TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see it, we probably won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Remember, if you miss a live and you want to see the previous lives or be ready for the next live, just go to twitch.com. Let's put it in like that. You see it. Uh, this is the Sun inside Met Police Firearms Center, or Centre. I never knew how to pronounce that word. Whatever. Uh, where London cops train for raids, shootings, and attacks of roar of terror. Say it backwards so they don't get me. You know what I'm saying? Oh wait a minute. Hold on now, y'all. Almost, I almost forgot. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Let's get into it, man. This one too. This for me too. This is the Met Police Training Centre for armed officers in Gravesend, Kent. Here, the elite officers tasked with responding to London's life and death incidents learn how to take and save a life. My name is Mike Sullivan. I'm the Sun's crime editor, and I've been granted access behind the scenes to see for myself the extreme pressure and intense scrutiny that officers go through. When this is not real, keep in mind, these are just training situations. videos. On average, there are around 4,000 armed incidents a year in the capital. And another 800 pre-planned operations which officers who carry guns will turn out on. Those cops that respond to them are in units that have undergone hundreds of hours of extra training before they're deployed onto the streets. It's one of the most dangerous areas of policing, and not just a physical danger, but the risks that officers carry in terms of the backlash from the law afterwards. They not only risk their lives, but also their freedoms. In September of last year, around 300 of them downed their weapons in protest after a colleague was charged with murder. Following that rebellion, then Home Secretary Suella Braverman ordered an accountability review of policing to establish whether officers would be being treated fairly under the current system. Met Police Commissioner. I said, I remember that. I remember when they went on strike because of that. Mark Rowley is calling for urgent reforms to make things fairer for his officers, who can sometimes face years of scrutiny for their handling of life and death incidents. I'm not gonna lie, y'all got some nerve over there. Like, the, the people complaining about how they handle the situation. It's much better handled than in America. Like on a scale of one to 10, one being terrible, 10 being great. I'm rating UK's police, as far as firearms incidents, at least a seven and a half. In America, one. You know what I'm saying? There's room for improvement, of course, just like there is on anything else, but like, come on now. I've come here to the Mets training facility to understand what goes into making an armed officer and how they react when they're facing dangers on the streets of the capital to protect the public. Specialist Firearms Command in the Met is known as MO19, and we start our tour in the museum where the scale of the capital's firearms problem is clear to see. This one. Hold on, is that a rocket launcher? Was that a Desert Eagle? I... Um, was made by. This is what I'm used to seeing y'all carry out there. Right here. A prisoner uh, in one of Her Majesty's prisons, made in the machine shop, and then subsequently found on a prison search. Uh, it fires a single shot, 2 2 bullet. 
This one. That was manufactured in jail? Uh, is a large caliber target revolver. Bro, what is this? A pew, pew, they got a laser beam? What is this? With a machine grip for a machine to an individual's hand with a suppressor and a, an optical sighting system on it for a large caliber target shooting. This yeah, is more is. of a conventional, what we class as a self-loading pistol. And so it's semi-automatic, it's not fully automatic. Um, very, very common, comes in many different forms. Works on a, ma a magazine with bullets in it. And as soon as you squeeze the trigger after making it ready. The first two firearms that we just seen were crazy. The belt will recycle itself, I say. It will put another round in the chamber to make it ready to fire again. So this is what 90% of modern day weapons will work on, on pistols. Not all the items here can kill you, and it's hard to know, even close up, whether a firearm is genuine or not. So all the, uh, the weapons that are on this side uh, are all completely fake. They're completely inert, will not fire any form of projectile whatsoever. Uh, the weapons that carry on this side are any form of projectile. whatsoever. Uh, the weapons that carry on this side are real viable guns and will discharge a bullet. There is no visual difference. Weight is quite a key thing but to work out that it's heavy in the something else you've actually got to be that close to pick it up or, or handle it. And as for what officers might encounter on the street it's very hard to tell nowadays. It, it, it really, really is. I mean, this, some of the stuff in here is, is up to 100 years old. Some of it is relatively modern. It's, you really do not know. You really don't, just don't know what is currently out there. There are around 3,000 firearms officers in the Met who carry out different roles. All of them must complete a set amount of training each year to keep their firearms blue ticket. For senior officers, that can total 250 hours of training annually. That exercise was a training scenario in relation to either a counter-terrorist exercise or a hostage rescue, whereupon life is at risk. Uh, and that particular method of entry is util utilised where life is at risk or other exceptional circumstances. The next exercise we're shown is modelled on the Bataclan theatre attack in Paris back in November 2015, in which 130 people died. We have a club premises here. Is, uh, two floors. We, there's no light inside there apart from strobe lights, and we have loud music. So we're looking at taking out um, a lot of the senses that police officers and everyone uh, deals with. So they're going to go in. There's two armed suspects inside the club, uh, multiple injured people inside. So we deploy the two ARVs to save life in, inside the address. So their main role there is to um, hopefully to confront and neutralise the threat. In this scenario, officers storm a nightclub before assessing the carnage which the terrorist suspects have inflicted. Downstairs we have four fatalities. and one person with a penetrating chest wound. And upstairs, there's a large number of people that um, have got catastrophic bleeds or penetrating chest wounds from the gunshots. So we've got two, what we call nesting sites, one upstairs, one downstairs. One upstairs is the busiest one. So if we go in, we can unwalk you through it. So as soon as there's no longer a threat, they just have to stop. They have to uh, spin, change caps, or almost like a medic cap. And from there, they just like triaging everybody inside that building. So you have to find everyone, treat everyone, stop them bleeding, keep them breathing. Once everyone's been found and you've done that rapid intervention, life-saving uh, treatment, then you can... ...get onto comms, get everyone to come, come to you to help you. 
But then once you've got that time, then you start doing real medicum work. So we're looking at stripping them down, finding the wounds that are gonna kill them slow, um, expose the wounds that are gonna work, gonna kill them quick, get oxygen, those that need oxygen, open the airways, the, the people that are unresponsive. Um, from then onwards, we just need to keep them warm, get help to us as quick as possible, because ultimately they need to go to hospital. They're not gonna survive just by laying on the floor with our treatment. And when you have ARVs dealing with someone that's been attacked, that had acid thrown on them, stabbed, run over, shot, ARVs are the best people to be dealing with that initial trauma. We get in on data. Damn, I was muted. How long was I muted? <laughs> I hope I didn't say anything. Ah, I was muted. Damn. <laughs> what did I say? Um, I was saying, um, oh, I do remember what I was saying. I was saying, um, I said, now, I kind of, we all think we know that they be going through training. We assume that they be going through training. But it's like, um, I didn't know it was this intricate, like this level of training. You know what I'm saying? So, so if, if they go through this level of training, there should honestly be no mishaps in, when they're really in the field. <laughs> like, in my opinion, then. You know what I'm saying? Like, shouldn't be no mishaps. Hey, shout out to you if you was reading lips and things of that nature. with emails to say that their initial interventions have saved life and if it wasn't for them with their skills and the kit that they've got these people would die Dang, how long how long was i muted i also said i said uh that paris attack it happened in 2015 i said i'd never heard of it never heard of it i don't know what i was doing in that time of life but i don't know how many americans have heard of it but i've never heard of it personally the, it was an attack on a nightclub where X amount of people perished away. Like, that's tough. RIP. Firearms officers can use their medical training to respond to life threatening situations that may not involve weapons, yeah. and they often do. So, this is enhanced medic training. Those two vehicles down there are uh, the armed response the vehicles, right, so. and you can see yeah, that's all I said, casualties uh, yeah. in the street, live casualties as well. So the instructors are finding out from the students at the moment what the injuries are. I also said YouTube, this is a training exercise and a training facility for police. Hence the blue handled guns would probably not real live ammunition, just blank rounds. The students are making their assessment of those injuries students. and responding accordingly. Last year, more than 800 incidents were attended by fire That's a dummy. It's which not did real. not involve guns and which required specialist Fake. medical help. They saved lives as well as, rarely, on occasions, taking them. The guys and girls out on the streets of London are very, very high. Blurred anyway. They consistently and persistently respond to 999 calls 66 times. Uh, during November, they responded to life-saving incidents outside of firearms incidents. What? Did, did y'all know? Oh, what is that? A fake Glock? <laughs> is that a real one? It looked kind of. It looked fake. But um, what was I saying? If you, if, this is how they do gunshot wounds, and 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 when you come in with one, no matter where it's at, this is how they're gonna treat it. You're gonna come into the hospital. They're gonna get you completely naked. It don't matter. They cutting everything off. Shoes, shirt, leg, underwear, you're going to be in there in your birthday suit. Because they need to see, they need to make sure of the entry wounds, exit wounds. They need to make sure there's no other ones that y'all might have missed. And then they put they, like, a, like a prostate exam. They give you essentially a prostate exam because they want to check for internal bleeding. So when you think, when you outside thugging, be careful. Because they're going to, if you get popped, that finger's going up there. So, hey. One of the first exercises potential firearms undergo is a simulated incident in the judgment range aimed at testing an officer's ability to make decisions under extreme pressure. Obviously, it replicates the handgun that they would normally have. Glock 17. Have, but like I say, it's just full of electrics. I know yeah, you've look a fake. squeeze of the trigger, and if you pull it, it will make a bang. So the system will pick up the bang. The system knows where the laser's pointing at the time when it makes the bang, so it shows where, where the person's been shot. 
the instructors can change the outcomes of the scenario as they play out. Oh, no, 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 like... Presenting <laughs> oh, officers with alternative endings it's to the incidents. Way. So you drive past a school. Yeah. Uh, there are multiple... This is traumatic. Uh, ...calls about uh, an active shooter. Many people, children, saying someone's been shot, someone's been shot, and you have to do um, like a single-person emergency entry to confront that shooter. So other units are on their way, so you might come across some other cops, so don't shoot them. Not gonna lie, as a law-abiding citizen, um, see, this is one of those situations, like in Florida, like if this was to happen in Florida, uh, like, and I was around, like, my human instinct would be to help. You know what I'm saying? Because these are kids. Like, there's no minding your business when kids are involved. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, if you run in there with your fire and then the police come in, like, two minutes later, they're going to assume it's you. So that's, like, a massive chance, like, you taking right there. Like, these, like, you would want to just wait for the police, even though you, like, hear all of this stuff going down and... and all the possibilities happening inside. Office. Three reasons to never use. It would be very difficult, though. Office. This is a crazy simulation. Bro shot three times and missed? I hit him on the fourth one. Okay. Stick the gun down. We'll play the video back yeah. and it will stop on each round you fired. So we can That's see right. now on the screen how it pans out. I reckon it's gone through his arm and, and into that. Green. Yeah, into her sternum. It's shown on the system. That's a bad shot. It's a no hit zone, so it shows a miss. So you oh, missed them. Shot the girl in the green. Shot the girl in the green. As the scenario played back on screen, the instructors rigorously interrogated my decision making, and I have to admit, it wasn't up to much. So terrible. the person with the gun, were they definitely the person that had shot the casualties? He had a, a gun, he was up, uh, holding up a gun, and the people in that room were frightened of him. They were? That's what I thought. Maybe a student that had taken the gun off the marauding gunman? And he's holding the gun, going, wow, that's amazing. I managed to get the gun off the bad guy, and he's run off. So in a... See what I'm talking I just said this. Like, it's almost the exact same scenario as I said, like a student being a hero, taking a gun, but like... Police walking in right at that moment, like no, no, no. hero, maybe. Everybody relax, police officers. Look, I've got the gun. I've taken it off him. Everyone's safe now. I'm the hero. Bang, 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 dead. I thought that they were standing back against the wall, um, and that to me suggested that they were in fear of him. So when you shot him and he fell on the floor, mm. did he drop the gun? I did look to see if he still had the gun. Definitely dropped it. And I didn't see it. You didn't see the gun? No. So why but did you shoot But you continued to fire again? Because I just wanted to make sure he was dead. I mean, you're saying you wanted to make sure he was dead, so that's attempted murder even if he doesn't die. Yes. I thought he was a risk to the other people but in the room. Because of the gun? Because of the But gun. you don't know where the gun was? At that point, no. Could you see both his hands? No. See, man, see, but there's a thing in America, that oath, the, that oath in them papers that the police sign under the Constitution and, and things of that nature, it gives them a license to K-I-L-L. So that's why when they go to court, it's a little bit different. It, anybody with firearms licenses in America, like they have, they also, police also have a license to K-I-L-L. We don't got that. <laughs> That's why the AARP or whatever it's called. What colour was the floor? Helpful. White. And what colour was the gun? Black. So pretty easy to, yeah. to see the gun. Couldn't take the chance that he didn't still have that gun. And would or another one. Or to the other people in the room. Do you think you shot him in the back? I think... Can't shoot anybody in the back. I did. 
you didn't consider that he might not be able to hear and you just shot him in the back. You shot him once, he fell over. You weren't sure where the gun was, so you shot him another, what, five, six times to make sure he was dead? It it sounds like murder. Definitely. That's a strenuous, cause that's, see, it's a lot of like little rules and things like that. Like in America, for sure, if somebody's invading you or whatever, even if they have a firearm, but if they start to run, you can't fire because you, they're trying to get away. There's no more imminent threat. Can't hit the nobody experience in the back. was quite humbling. Hopefully, you would shoot the bad guy. He would fall over, drop the gun. You wouldn't shoot him anymore. You would go forward, secure the gun, and give life-saving first aid until the ambulance gets there. They take him away. Everybody's happy. I'm unsure if that's how it's supposed to be in America. That's not the same training you get in America. Like, it sounds like they're trained to disarm. In America, they are definitely, like, you You let off the whole clip. Like, that's what it'd be looking like on TV, at least. I felt mentally fatigued. In most places where an, uh, where somebody has a firearm and they're getting, uh, yeah, they'd be letting off the whole clip. From my first attempt. I wouldn't know, though. I'm just, you know, I was more successful. Commenting. You dropped off your colleague. Uh, there is a, a, a domestic uh, dispute neighbor has heard the next door neighbor shouting and arguing they've been shouting and arguing a few times please present yourself control basically say there have been a number of calls to that house in the past three months the police have gone there's uh, there's never been any injuries there's never been any sign of disturbance both the male and female occupant of the house have said it was just a loud disagreement control there appears to be nobody present at the this address at the time. Now going up the stairs. There are voices. Please present yourself. Control. Urgent backup required. Present yourself now. Please present. So, going through the, the bottom of the house, yeah. you announce yourself as police. Certainly in the initial bit, I didn't see. If she would have pulled it out of here, wouldn't have been mad. See anything that would have caused any concern, anything? Right. Do you notice anything that seemed a bit out of the he ordinary? Was up there doing something crazy. There are no definitive outcomes in these scenarios. More important is testing the officer's ability to focus under extreme pressure and justify their actions when faced with a decision to take a life or not. And then you, you said that you have- That is true, like why is the um, flashlight so low? It's not even bright. I heard a woman's voice. Yeah, it sounded to me like that. Like, said they need new batteries. Uh, uh, voice, uh, to be threatened. This is not the exact science as human factors are involved. Mistakes can be made sometimes with fatal consequences. But there is no doubt from what we have seen about the rigorous and professional training which these officers undergo. Get that gun! Drop that gun! Drop that gun! Hands up! This is very enlightening. Uh, 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 a look into the police training facilities. My opinions, my takes on what's going on, what I've seen. If you beg to differ, let me know in the comments. In YouTube, you know, this is a safe place. <laughs> Tell Lily, leave a like, comment, subscribe, I'm gone.